Pierre Abelard, born 1079, died 1142, was a scholastic philosopher, theologian, and monk from Le Pelet, Brittany, 16 kilometers east of Nantes in what is now modern-day France. A gifted dialectician of nobility, he studied under the nominalist theologian Rosellinus Compendiensis and one of Rosellinus's students, William of Champeau. Nominalism being the belief that universals, for example the good, man, potentially numbers, do not derive their form from some metaphysical reality, but rather are just names we've created to help conceptualize the world. Other significant nominalists include Boethius and William of Ockham. Abelard was quarrelsome by nature, and this irritated his teachers. After studying exegesis under Anselm of Laon, not to be confused with Anselm of Canterbury, Abelard, unimpressed, taught his own exegesis contrary to Anselm's, and was banned from teaching in Laon. Abelard contended that people should be able to understand the sacred books simply by studying them themselves, together with the glosses thereon, and without the aid of any teacher. While Abelard was argumentative, it should be noted that academic disputations were a common aspect of education at the time. According to John Marenbon, disputations could occur between a master and a pupil, and the master might find himself forced into self-contradiction. Even strangers could interrupt a lecture and draw the master into disputation. Such logical contests were acrimonious affairs in which the challenger sought to humiliate an established figure, and correspondingly establish themselves. In 1115, on account of his growing fame, Abelard became the master of the cathedral school at Notre Dame. Fulbert, a canon at Notre Dame, sought the best education for his niece Heloise and hired Abelard as her tutor, which led to one of history's most famous love affairs. Abelard, having previously shown no interest in women, had a reputation for chastity and Fulbert gave him access to his household. As Abelard described, under the pretext of study, we spent our hours in the happiness of love and learning held to us the secret opportunities that our passion craved. They were eventually discovered, but carried on in secret. When Heloise became pregnant, Abelard sent her away to give birth to their son, Astrolabe, and made an agreement with Fulbert to secretly marry her and to keep the whole affair quiet. After the wedding, however, infighting between Fulbert and Heloise became violent, and concerned for her safety, Abelard sent Heloise to a convent. Convinced that Abelard was just trying to rid himself of Heloise, Fulbert hired several men to break into Abelard's house to exact revenge. There, they had vengeance on me with a most cruel and most shameful punishment, such as astounded the whole world, for they cut off those parts of my body with which I had done that which was the cause of their sorrow. The perpetrators were brought to equally harsh justice, but nonetheless Abelard joined a monastery out of shame. I must confess that in my misery, it was the overwhelming sense of my disgrace rather than any ardor for conversion to the religious life that drove me to seek the seclusion of the monastic cloister. Abelard hopped between monastic communities but continued to find trouble. One of his books was condemned and burned. He attempted to live as a hermit for a bit, but Bernard of Clairvaux stirred up enmity against him, forcing him to flee. He tried to reform a corrupt monastic house only to have the monks inadvertently kill another monk in an attempt to poison him. It wasn't all bad though. He also reunited with Heloise, and we still have their letters. He was also able to resume teaching and wrote Sick and Nong, a textbook for theological exercise. But Bernard continued to hound him, and Abelard accused Bernard of slander, calling him out to answer for his accusations at the upcoming Council of Sen. Bernard, however, feared direct confrontation with Abelard, who he compared to a Goliath in such disputes. So in advance, he met with the council in private and had Abelard condemned of heresy before he even arrived. Upon arrival, realizing what had happened, Abelard, concerned for his life, fled to Rome to appeal to the Pope. But before he could arrive, Pope Innocent II had already commanded that his books be burned. Luckily, along the way, Abelard was convinced by Peter the Venerable to stay and receive sanctuary at the Abbey of Cluny. Peter managed to arrange a reconciliation with Bernard to have the sentence of excommunication lifted and persuaded Innocent that it was enough if Abelard remained at Cluny under its aegis. Abelard was treated not at all as a condemned heretic, but as a revered and wise scholar, and in his final months spent at the Cluniac Priory as an example of a devout Christian humbly preparing himself for death. He died on April 21st, 1142. In Abelard's story, we can see several things emblematic of his time. A lack of clerical celibacy, the struggles to reform monastic houses, philosophical shifts away from Platonism, and proto-reformation challenges to traditional authorities and doctrines. 
Much of Abelard's autobiography comes from a letter he wrote to a friend who was struggling to show how much worse it could be and how you can still use suffering for personal development. As he explains his own life, Abelard says, I was utterly absorbed in pride and sensuality. Divine grace, the cure for both diseases, was forced upon me. For my sensuality, I lost the things whereby I practiced it. For my pride, I knew the humiliation of seeing burned the very book in which I most glorified. Inspired by the suffering of Christ and the saints, we should endure our persecutions, all the more steadfastly, the more bitterly they harm us. We should not doubt that even if they are not according to our deserts, at least they serve for purifying of our souls. This has been Ross von Hassen at Saints and Stuff. Thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe. If you have any ideas for future videos you'd like to see, feel free to comment below. We'd love to hear from you. God bless.